Milling was one of the first and most important industries in the country. The construction and operation of water-powered mills to cut lumber, grind corn into meal, and wheat into flour was an important step in the economic development of the state. Before mills were built, farmers and settlers had to grind their wheat and corn by hand or tie a mortar to a tree branch to pound their grains and pestles made out of hollowed tree stumps. This was a time-consuming, labor-intensive activity, unpopular with many early settlers in the Ohio country. For example, in January 1800, a group of Hamilton County residents petitioned the United States House of Representatives for the right to build a gristmill in their area. The petition pointed out how important the need for mills had become and read in part that for want of grist mills taking a considerable part of our time in grinding our grain in hand or having to go the distance of 15 or 25 miles, none being nearer to us at the present, we ask permission from the Honorable House to allow unto Abraham Freeman his heirs and assigns for the purpose of erecting a grist mill on the reserve section. The Ohio Company, who wanted to improve the land in speed settlement, offered land to any settler willing to build a mill on their property. The source of power for the mills would come from Ohio's rivers and streams, which were both plentiful and cheap. The first grist mill in what would be Ohio was constructed along Wolf Creek, about 16 miles north of Marietta, in 1789-1790. By 1840, there were roughly 2,000 water-powered mills operating throughout the state. So important were mills to Ohio's agricultural economy that on nearly every stream and winding waterway, giant water wheels and the mills they powered sprang up at roughly the same time as settlements. The eighth census of the United States in 1860 identified at least two mills in 87 of Ohio's 88 counties. Licking County had 28 water-powered mills in 1860 and trailed only Montgomery and Hamilton counties with the most in the state. The power generated by the water's current was transferred to the mill by the water wheel. Built of the finest white oak, the wooden water wheels and the mills they powered were delicately balanced and required continual maintenance by a millwright to function properly. The process of turning wheat into flour began when a farmer brought his grain to a mill. The wheat was first passed over a sieve to separate the grain from the larger objects in the bins. The second step was to run the wheat through a smut machine, which scoured the grains and rubbed off the protective layer of fuzz. The third step further cleaned the wheat by running it through a winnowing machine or a suction fan to remove the remaining dirt and dust. The wheat was then transported by elevators to a hopper. The mill operates when water is released to strike the giant wheel. The motion of the water wheel transmits its power, generated by the weight of the water, to the cog wheel. The cog wheel is the largest gear in the mill, and it in turn meshes with the wallower. The wallower, sometimes called a trundle, is made of two circular boards and is affixed to the spindle. It engages the cogs of the counter wheel, which rotate the capstone and grinds the grain. Water-powered mills used one of three types of water wheels, depending on the speed of the current and the depth of the water supply. These were the overshot wheel, the breastshot wheel, and the undershot wheel. Overshot wheels roll forward with the weight of their water-filled buckets. After about one-third of a revolution, the water spills from the wheel. Overshot wheels were ideal when a miller had a fast-moving, uniform flow of water. Breast shot wheels rotate against the current. The water strikes the breast wheel below its center and is briefly retained in the buckets, about a quarter of a turn, and then emptied into the tail race. Undershot wheels also move against the current and were used where the fall of water was restrictive. Undershot wheels are nearly similar to breast shot wheels, but the water would only fill a few buckets near the bottom of the wheel. Of the three, it produced the least amount of power for a mill.